that after waiting so long and with a number of frustrations along the way, he's got to be careful that he doesn't show that he wants it too much, that emotions get the better of Jordan Gill. 12 rounds for the European Featherweight Championship, and this has every sign, every indication of being a real test of the boxing IQ of Jordan Gill against a man who is a 35-fight veteran, five defeats in those fights, but all of them in good company. Gill trying to get to work behind that left hand. It's been so potent for him in his professional career so far. But this is the biggest stage. Good left hook from Gurphy inside the first half a minute or so. Gill started well with the jab and a good left hook there. It won't be, won't be hard to find Gurphy, but he's got to be careful about it. Gurphy will always come back for the counter. He'll catch, try to catch him and counter just like that. Good left hook from Gurphy. Smart single shots from Gurphy so far in the first minute of the contest. Warning signs already for Jordan Gill. He's not a classical counterpuncher because he fights in the shell, but he will always punch, punch back after you finish your punching. Gurphy getting on the front foot now in his fight to win the title against Andoni Gargo of Spain in August of last year, he spent a lot of the contest on the back foot, and voluntarily so, inviting Gargo to come forward. And again, tries that right hand over the top that was successful in the first minute of the contest. Gerfi starting in very confident fashion, and he was strolling around ringside a couple of hours ago, looking like this was his stage, and he started very confidently. It's very good from Gerfi, because if Gil's trying to jab, he's trying to take away that jab by slipping it and coming back with the right hand. And now Gil has to be very careful with the jab, and not make it predictable, make it an unpredictable jab. An excellent first round of action here so far. Final minute of the opening round for the European Featherweight Championship. Jordan Gill with one defeat in his 28 fight career so far. Better from Gill because he's fainting now, sound to faint. Gerfi covering up as Gil tries to mount an attack. The left hand of Gil could be really important here. Fires it to the body twice in a row. Another one of those right hands from Gerfi gets through. Gil was trying to read it, trying to move away, but Gerfi still timed it right. Gil can't go back in straight lines. As ever from David Colwell. And now Jordan Gill has to work his way into the contest to really gain the respect of Gerfi. I think Colwell saying you have to respect Gerfi, the experience of this man. And he has to earn these opportunities. Good right hand from Gerfi there. Caught Gill on top of the head. There won't be too many styles that Gerfi hasn't faced. Six European title fights in his career. Four of them have ended in victory. Now Gill trying to get some momentum behind his work. Can he prove to be the stronger man against the former champion down two weights at Bantamweight? Good left hook and then right hand to the body from Gill, beginning to find some kind of rhythm. And moving his feet side to side, not straight lines. Just as Coldwell was saying in the corner, move off the straight line. Switching the attack from body to head well, Gill. Still getting caught that right hand though. Back and forth action here. Neither one really standing there and fighting yet. Gill's face becoming slightly reddened as we reach the halfway stage of the second round. 
But important there, he seemed to see that right hand coming and dance back out of range. He needs to use his feet. Gerfin, 35 years old, 40 fights, a lot of hard fights, a lot of championship fights. I can see his legs aren't what they used to be, especially when he's coming forward. Get to just box a move, especially in these early rounds. Not be there for Gerfin to land on, especially with that right hand. Heel varying the work to body and to head. Both men have had issues with body shots in the past. Gil's one defeat against the Mexican Mario Tonoco, who was scored three times with body shots, but did say afterwards that he'd been afflicted by food poisoning and shouldn't have gone ahead with that particular contest. Good jab from Gil. And then a right hand, single shots, smart work, impressive work as he fires away to the body. Lee McGregor floored Gerfi with body shots in the opening round of their European bantamweight title fight and then finished it with a left hook in that opening round. <laughs> Gerfi indicating to his cornerman there that he knows exactly what he's doing here as we move into the third round, scheduled for 12. It's the European featherweight championship. As Addy was saying in the build-up, such a strong British tradition in the European featherweight division, dating back a hundred years and more. Britons who've won the title and gone on to world title glory in recent years. Josh Warrington and Lee Selby back in the 80s, Barry McGuigan, the great Welshman Howard Winston in the 60s. As Gill tries to get to work and just takes another one of those clipping right hands from Gerfi here. Gerfi so efficient in covering up the gloves tucked tight around his chin and temple and also the elbows covering up those body shots a lot of the time. Gil is starting to get a good rhythm now, and it's coming from the feet. He's moving his head off the line. You constantly hear Dave Colwell from the corner shot off the line, off the line. What he means to move laterally, side to side with his head and feet. Good work from Gil. And that's exactly what Colwell was looking for. Give himself the angles, but still that right hand is finding its way home for Gerfi. Not quite with the same kind of effect as it did in the first round in particular. Yeah, Gerfi needs, sorry, Mike, Gerfi needs to respond now because he's just becoming too stationary. Becoming a sitting target for Gil. Investing in the body, Gil. Mixing up with jabs and hooks, left and right. Still got to be careful when pulling out high. And pulling out with his right glove down there, and a left hook from Gerfi got home once again. But there's some really solid punches being landed here by Gil, in particular, as you said, Andy, to the body. And that could tell here the natural featherweight against the man who's only recently moved up two weights to this division. The jab is really to, beginning to become effective for Gil to the body and to the head. And it's the feints, it's all coming off the feints. He's had to land that jab because he's fainting before it. Looking for those opportunities at the end of exchanges, so Gil just has to be careful. But the work rate in that third round was impressive, in particular to the body, but then towards the end of the round as well, getting some fluency and some accuracy behind the jab. Gervin just needs to pick up his activity when he's not punching. He's just become a bit too stationary, a bit too predictable. Looking for that double jab right hand now. Good change, jab to the body, right hand to the head. I said at the beginning that this would be a test of the boxing IQ of Jordan Gill, and he's really having to work for his openings here 
and to be very careful at the end of the exchanges. You see what Gill is doing really well is that it's, what, it's the movement he's doing when he's not punching. It's just as important as what you do when you punch. The little things, the little steps, the little head movements. It's offsetting Gervie all the time. Gill trying to build on those figures, forcing home that left jab, and it could open up so much more in the way of success as this fight wears on. And Gaffey, maybe at 34 and moving up in weight, starts to feel it. That's good from Gill for me, getting physical. That can be very demoralizing for an opponent. And you see, it's the feints from Gil, the feints from Gil. It's forcing Gervy to, to be reactionary. He's the one who just, he's waiting on Gil to act all the time. Good exchange on the ropes there. Because it's Gil leading the way with his exchange and with his non-punching activity. Gil, you get the sense now, starting to fancy himself in terms of power shots, holding his ground, sending the shots in there. Covering up well. That left hook to the body. Clipping right hand, though, again from Gil, he gets through as Gil responds with strong work. Body shots beneath the elbows of the Frenchman. The French corner very happy with what their man is doing. That's exactly what they're asking for, they're saying. And they're prepared for a 12-round fight, Mike. He's been here many times before. He went to Spain and did it. 12 rounds against a go, uh, a go, -go and he'll do it again here. So they're prepared for the long haul here tonight. So into the second third of what's becoming a riveting contest here. Two men, each of them trying to impose his authority on the contest and both having success. Gurphy opting to stand virtually stock still on the ropes and Gil opens up. Now yeah, slips inside the jab and works well to the body once again. He's just looking for that one perfect counter punch, Gurphy. He's lining it up, just hasn't been able to land it yet. And all the while Gil has been busy and winning the round. Just like that right hand. Yeah, if he went for the big shot there, he didn't quite time it. And now Gil responds. Again, has to be wary of that big shot coming from Gerfi. Gerfi tried the left hook. Gil was wise to it. Gil now switches southpaw. Drives those right hands into the body. Gonna pick his punches here, Gil, because Gerfi is trying to tire him out at this stage. Yeah, Gil's got to be very careful because a lot of French fighters fight in this style where they have a very tight guard. They stay there, they're quite comfortable there. They're actually conditioned for that. The rounds are hard and they brace themselves for taking shots. So Gil's got to be careful not to get careless. Referee Thomas Walter of Switzerland allowing Gerfi a respite. Into the last half a minute or so of this day, fifth round. Voilà, 
There you go, he says Colwell in the corner as Gil read that attack from Gerfi. Gerfi pot shotting, trying to catch Gil by surprise at the end of those exchanges, but now Gil is seeing those shots coming in the way that he was getting caught in the earlier rounds. Good body set from Gil. A lot of animation in the Frenchman's corner, and they were just as we saw on the slow motion replay. Jordan Gill holding his feet on the line as Colwell warned him against and getting caught by that right hand. Although, as Andy said, he did just get there first with his own shot. Andy also talking about the potential of this going the full 12 rounds, a very competitive, hard thinking 12 rounds. And Gill has never been beyond 10. Gerfi has gone the championship distance, the full 12 rounds, three times in his near 15-year professional career. Gerfi a little bit different in this round, coming out with more ambition, boxing well, moving well, and landing keen shots. Not a sitting target like he was in earlier rounds. Certainly the noise is coming from the Frenchman's corner, suggesting that they are more than happy with what he's doing at this stage. Boxing very well this round. And finding his jab too. Into the second half of round six, and after what seemed a very solid round for Gill in five, now Gerfi restating his message here that he's a long way from finished. Gil gets to work behind the jab again and putting the combinations together in and around the body of Gerfi. Gerfi's very, very good at coming off the ropes and attacking. And he's catching Gil when Gil's not expecting him. Good right hand there. Got to be careful, Gil. This is a good tackle from Gerfi. Strong round for the Frenchman as another left hand goes in, followed by the right hand. The two signature punches that he's been landing throughout the contest. In particular, gave notice right in the opening round, and now he's having more success here in the closing seconds of round six. On the front foot, and Gil is having to ride this wave at the moment. The most difficult stage of the fight so far for Gil as Gerfi gets on the front foot once again. And there's a buoyancy about the work. Laron Richards, who has been successful at this European level and a brilliant win last time around as well, just before Christmas. Looking to push towards World Honours, which is exactly what Jordan Gould's looking for, but not if he takes too many more of those right hands again. Gerfi finding the opening. <laughs> When he misses with the right hand, he always pulls back with a check hook, Gerfi. Gil needs to get back on his boxing, move his feet, back on his feints and back on his jab. But Gerfi is a clever fighter, an experienced fighter, very calm under pressure. Well, the run Richards, confident that Jordan Gill has a healthy lead, but others might be seeing this differently at ringside. Gerfi, in particular, a very impressive sixth round. And as we move into this second half of the contest, so the blemishes are beginning to appear around the face of Jordan Gill. He does have a habit of marking up fairly easily, and he's now 
showing the signs of some of those right hands and left hooks that have been cannoning off his chin and temples across the first half of the fight. Still, this could go either way. This fight's very much in the balance, and these next two rounds are very pivotal. Like, these next two rounds will probably decide who wins the whole fight. He's got to find something here, dig in. He's, he's, he's trying to force it, and he's trying to work it, he's trying to find it. He's doing well this round. But it's going to take a little bit more to, to deter Gurphy. Gurphy, veteran of those six European title fights, knows how fortunes fluctuate during the course of a long, hard 12-round fight. No sign of panic when he was under pressure in the fourth and fifth rounds. Good shot by Gurphy. One, two, left hook. When he throws the right hand, he always comes back with the left hook. Those are the shots that have been so troubling for Gill all the way throughout the contest. Just over 20 seconds to go, and he has to hold on now. Gerfi senses a quick finish here. Gill covering up on the ropes here, and he's going to have to show something to the referee here. Oh, and Gill hit his head heavily on the canvas there. He's on unsteady legs as he makes his way to the neutral corner just above our commentary position. And that was danger for Jordan Gill, unforeseen as he fell to the canvas in that maul with Gerfi, so he hit his head heavily as he fell. Gerfi opening up, last few seconds of the round, pulled over to the neutral corner. Level at this stage on Tony Bellew's card, heading into the eighth round. Dave Colwell in this very corner told Gill to stay on the ropes, to just cover up until he gets his legs back. Will he get his legs back? Gerfi senses here that he could finish this inside the distance. Oh, he needs to tie up, he needs to tie him up. He can't stand there. He's got his eyes, but he hasn't got his legs. He's going to get hit again. Gerfi measuring the shots, a right hand gets through. Now he starts to open up, looking for the finish in the eighth round, and still two minutes to go here, and Gill decides not to move off the ropes. But is he thinking straight? Did he make that decision? This is very dangerous tactics from standing on the ropes like that. I know he's got his eyes, he's got his upper, head, upper body movement. It just takes an experienced fight like Gervin just to pick the right one. Good right hand right right from Gill. Now he's got to try somehow to follow up that shot. Gill showing there's something left into the second half of round eight. Can he now turn it back his way? Level on the card of Tony Bellew. Still plenty to fight for here. Doesn't look right to me still. Now he gets back voluntarily to his own corner, that blue corner. Covers up. Is there one more big shot in the arsenal of Jordan Gill? Can he find it here while he's on the ropes? Tries to work away to the body. Sinks those shots in. But Gerfi takes them and comes back on the attack, trying to prise open those gloves of Gill. Forty seconds to go in the round. Jordan Gill in survival mode. Will his senses return as Gerfi continues on the attack? The action has been here in this corner for pretty much the end. He's hurt again. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt, Mike. Big right hand over the top from Gerfi. Last few seconds of the round. Gerfi once again trying to. The finishing shot. Hats up to Jordan Gill. He's shown a half bigger than his whole arena tonight. Can he stand up? As those in earlier rounds. 
Now, Gil did say right at the start, that minute between the rounds, that he isn't hurting me. But the signs suggested differently from what we're seeing here at ringside. Into round nine. Two big rounds for Karim Gerfi in a row. It's hurt again. It's hurt again. He left that right glove by the right eye, did Gil? He felt that one. And so the action returns to the point where it was almost throughout the entire duration of the eighth round. And Gil trying to cover up on the ropes. All the time being mentored, being guided in the corner by Coldwell just beneath him. And, and this has turned into a, a completely different contest now. It's like one fighter is completely on defense and one fighter is completely under the attack. And it's who can who can I do to the other? Gerfi steps away, clearly believing that he has have better opportunities at middle and long range, and the legs clearly are gone. Jordan Gill swivels away there off balance without even taking a punch. Gerfi senses it. The corner had to start thinking about the, the fighter's welfare here. His legs are clearly gone. His hands are good, his eyes are good, but he's going to get hurt. He needs something big, he needs to come back with something big. Still half the round to go here. Right hand from Gerfi. And Gil here clearly is troubled by an issue around his right eye. He's been holding the right glove there time and again after taking heavy shots. He's got a problem there. Gil trying to cover up on the ropes. The referee looking on intently here with a minute still to go in round nine. Gil has barely moved from that position for the last five minutes of the contest. I just don't see the point of prolonging this. He's fighting well, he's showing bravery and heart, but sometimes you've got to take it out of the fighter's hands because they're too brave sometimes. Another clipping right hand from Gerf, he gets through at the end of that latest exchange. Gil bravely, courageously firing away to the body. But it doesn't seem as if there's much else left from Gil. Now suddenly he finds some fire from within, digs deep into those reserves. Only these men know where they have to go at this stage of a fight as brutal as this has become for Gil. He tries to sway on the ropes, still tries to find a home for those body shots. Last few seconds of the ninth. ring one single right hand just as the bell was about to sound at the end of the round and behind Jordan Gill there's concern for the stricken Karim Gerfi what an amazing comeback as you saw there Jordan Gill can barely stand himself but suddenly from somewhere and maybe even he doesn't know where from. He found the right hand and it's all over. And Jordan Gill, in one of the most remarkable turnarounds, is the European featherweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 59 seconds. Round number nine. We have your winner by way of knockout. He is the new European featherweight champion, Jordan, the three again. And what a sporting reaction there from the Frenchman, Karim Gerfi, who has lost his European featherweight championship belt, now being held aloft by Jordan Gill at the age of 27, looking to move his career on.